One of the biggest looming threats for the cryptocurrency industry is the potential for government crackdown that could completely render it useless. After all, if blockchain technology is truly disruptive as we think it is, it stands to reason that it's going to face significant headwinds along the way, particularly from people who are threatened by its existence. And for a long time, many people have been sitting on the sidelines afraid to go all in on this new technology because they fear crackdown is coming. Well, that moment could be now. And in this video, I want to talk about a secret plan to kill the cryptocurrency industry that lots of people are talking about right now. And exactly what you should know about this, you know, should you be worried? I'm going to talk about all this as a blockchain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory. And on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to become a blockchain master, step-by-step -step chart finish, break into the blockchain industry, increase your salary well past 100K, I can show you to do that over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into this. We've seen a lot of nasty headlines for the crypto industry lately, like SEC going after Coinbase, Binance being sued by the CFTC, and major crypto-friendly banks like Silvergate being shut down in the wake of the Silicon Valley bank collapse that we're in the middle of. And there's a big theory going around online that these are actually all part of a much larger coordinated attack on crypto called Operation Choke Point. So let me explain. Well, this is really actually called Operation Choke Point 2.0 because Operation Choke Point was something that actually already happened in the 2010s, which was an initiative by the U.S. Department of Justice beginning in 2013, which investigated banks in the United States and the business they did with firearms dealers, payday lenders, and other companies believed to be at a high risk of fraud and money laundering. And this continued all the way into 2017. And the FDIC settled multiple lawsuits by promising to Congress additional training for its examiners to cease issuing informal and unwritten suggestions to banks. Now, it's no secret that blockchain holds the potential to completely change the world as we know it. And if that's true, then along the way, of course, we're going to see headwinds and pushback. And for a long time, people have anticipated crack down the horizon and just biding their time viewing it as inevitable. And that could be now as a part of this much larger coordinated attack that we're talking about. So why now? Why is this the perfect point in time to do something like this? Well, if you're going to attack an enemy, then timing is crucial, okay? Would you want to try to attack an enemy when they're incredibly strong? No, you would want to try to attack an enemy when they are incredibly weak and vulnerable. Let me explain. So let's say that you were wanted to launch a coordinated attack on the crypto industry. Why on earth would you do that in something, you know, like around 2021 when cryptocurrency prices were just ripping to new all-time highs, everybody and their brothers like trying to jump in? No, that's just the time for people to sit back and make money off of crypto, even people who are potentially going to impose some sort of crackdown on it. So you wouldn't want to do it during that time. You wouldn't wait till it's incredibly weak. So fast forward to 2022. Um, you know, we saw things like the Terra Luna stablecoin disaster blow up. We've seen things like FTX, you know, completely collapse. And even on into 2023, when we've seen other, you know, crypto friendly banks like Silvergate go under. You know, that's at a time when the entire industry is much weaker than it was. You know, even just a year and a half ago, lots of different businesses inside the industry are strapped for resources to potentially fight back against you. And there's lots of people who are even ashamed of being a part of the crypto industry. And if you wanted to impose some sort of crackdown, you probably want some type of public support for this. And if you make crypto look really bad in the media from all the terrible things that happened in 2022, it's gonna be a lot easier to do all that stuff now than it was maybe just 18 months ago. And so that's one reason why the timing could be right to push forward with something like this. So that's the why, but let's talk about the how you would do something like this. Well, if you're gonna do a big crackdown on crypto, you're probably not just going to come out and say, all right, crypto bad, crypto done, boom, it's banned. In fact, like inside the United States, it would be incredibly hard to even do something like that with our current, uh, you know, power systems that be. So what could you do instead? Well, you could launch a full on assault from multiple different angles. And that's exactly like what we're talking about. It's Operation Choke Point 2.0. And you probably do it slowly over time and then maybe build up enough momentum where it could effectively kill it. You know, we see a timeline like this, okay, like even starting on December 6th of 2022 with the open letter uh, about FTX. On December 7th, we see Signature having deposits for its crypto clients. On January 3rd, the FDIC and the OCC release a joint statement on the risks of banks engaging with crypto. January 9th, Metropolitan Commercial Bank announces a total shutdown of its crypto asset related vertical. Silvergate stock fall, Binance gets wrecked, Federal Reserve denies crypto bank custodian two years application to become a member of the Federal Reserve system. And the list just goes on and on, bringing us to our current moment where we see things like, you know, Coinbase having action taken against them by the SEC. And so that's how you would do this. 
you would do it with a bunch of different actions from multiple different people all targeted the same broad enemy. And if you were trying to try to cut off an enemy in real life, what you would do, let's say it was inside of a burning building. And if you were going to reduce to an enemy in real life, what would you try to do, right? If there was a coordinated ambush, you'd want to cut off any potential excess that your enemy could take. All right. And any potential entry points for other people to support them. Basically, you want to cut off all lifelines and resources. So, you know, extending that analogy to crypto, if crypto is basically getting unbanked, you know, from the traditional system, what could that do? Well, anybody who would use cryptocurrency, you know, or use smart contracts or use anything on chain, what if you essentially cut off the ability for them to take cash and then get into the crypto ecosystem, basically making it a lot harder or impossible to buy crypto and use it? Or from the opposite perspective, take the crypto that you have now and then cash out of it and turn it into fiat money that you might want to use in, you know, scenarios where it's impossible to pay for things in crypto or likewise, you know, make it much harder for merchants or other people who might want to accept crypto for goods and services. That all those things combined could basically make cryptocurrency itself um, a lot less useful and maybe even potentially useless altogether. And another way to hurt your enemy in a point of weakness like this is to basically hurt people inside the industry while they're in a moment of vulnerability like they are in right now, like basically cutting off you know any businesses inside the crypto space from traditional banking services. In fact, there's you know sort of a, an idea floating around out there that like some of the banks that went under that were more crypto friendly you know, during the Silicon Valley bank collapse or potentially targeted because they were crypto friendly, you know, mostly just as a part of this crackdown in the crypto industry. All right, so that's an overview of the what, the how, and the why of this coordinated attack on the crypto industry. So what are my thoughts on the matter? Do I think this is actually going to work? Do I think it's going to kill the crypto industry? Do you think, do I think you should be worried? So first of all, I'll give you my thoughts on regulations, okay? You know, I am a realist, and then I think that regulations are inevitable for the cryptocurrency space, okay? I'm not a huge fan of regulations because in a lot of ways, I think they cause more harm than they do good. But I am a realist in thinking that they are going to arrive eventually. When I say regulations, I mean more regulations because we already have some. But when they do, that we should try to shoot for the best regulatory frameworks that we can. Now, that being said, whenever FTX happened, I had a feeling that we were probably going to get some sort of regulatory crackdown a lot faster and probably more severe than if it had never happened in the first place. And at that moment could be, you know, now. But what's that actually going to look like, you know, after all this happens? Well, I think there's actually good reasons for the cryptocurrency industry to continue to exist after this and to still have a ton of value. Okay, so number one, let's look at the Let's look from the other side of the equation here, okay? You have to ask yourself, if crypto has this threat, okay, why hasn't it just been, you know, all out banned in the first place? I mean, already up to this point. Well, in my view, like, you don't really go outright ban something that you intend to regulate and that can actually grow your own uh, domestic economy. So what do I mean by that? Well, again, crypto has been around for a long time. There's been many opportunities to just squash it up to the point of now. But one of the reasons I think that hasn't happened yet is because we can actually have a huge benefit to having crypto inside the United States and, you know, innovation happening here. So for example, like, why would you ban crypto if you could tax it? Okay. And then get a ton of GDP growth inside of the United States based on all the innovation that's happening in the crypto space. So uh, for that reason, like I think the incentives are in line to keep crypto in the United States. And also as people start to use this, if we are truly moving in the direction of central bank digital currencies or CBDCs, then there's a strong incentive to continue operating crypto rails inside the US. Now there's lots of questions about what our CBDC is going to look like. Will they actually use the crypto technology that we have now or will we have just entirely new things that are created by governments? We don't know yet. And you could also make the argument that, you know, part of this crackdown could be to try to force an alternative to using, you know, some type of central bank digital currency instead of public blockchain infrastructure that we have right now. Now, that part does remain to be seen. But the whole point I'm trying to make here is that I don't think that we're going to see an outright ban on crypto because we haven't seen one yet. And it's been around long enough for us to actually create one. Now, could we see 
crypto activity just further regulated than it was before to where you can do fewer things with it than you could before and diminish the value proposition. Now we could see some of that, but I don't see it getting to the point where it becomes so choked out like this name Operation Choke Point implies, where it becomes, you know, just useless entirely. I don't think that's going to happen. And the last major question that you probably are wondering is like, what does that mean for the future of this industry? Like, should I be worried about this? Like, are you, maybe you're working in blockchain right now or you want to work in blockchain. So my answer is no. I still think we're going to see innovation in this space despite what's happening in the regulatory environment right now. And you don't really want to just change directions mid course because you're scared of something that could potentially happen that isn't guaranteed yet. I think they were just scratching the surface for what we can do with blockchains in the first place. And just like I was saying before, it's not really in the U.S.'s best interest to just push all that innovation offshore when we could get a ton of economic benefits out of it and also increase tax revenue off something like that. I mean, blockchain is going to create a lot of jobs. It already has. And if you are a U.S. citizen, it's really in the government's incentive for you to earn income off these newly created jobs and collect taxes from you. All right, so that's an overview of this coordinated attack to try to squash crypto that everybody's talking about right now. That's a you know a brief overview of everything that's happened up to this point and a few different viewpoints on what could happen after this. At the end of the day, I do think this could get a little choppy for a while, but I really don't see this as a death nail for the crypto industry. And if you're plugged into the space, I don't think this should ultimately worry you long term. So I hope you like this video. You know, as always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps this video out so the more we can learn about blockchain. And if you are as fascinated with technology as I am and you're in this for the long term, that can definitely help you become a blockchain master, break in the industry, you know, increase your salary well past 100K over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. Okay, you don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.